Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Mini Orchestra, a fantastic new app from GSI. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Additionally, if you would like to participate in the giveaway and uh, have an opportunity to own a copy of Mini Orchestra, then please do follow the instruction contained in the video description. Thank you again. So, Mini Orchestra works as a standalone or it works as a plugin. As you can see now, it's loaded as a, an audio unit version 3 instance inside a UM. As you can see at the top here, if I close it, you can see just an audio channel with a Mini Orchestra loaded as an audio source. So, no effects. The other thing to notice is the CPU usage is really low when you use it is amazing. gone up to 4%, something like that. But even when I actually enable all nine parts, as you can see, gone up to 9% of CPU. Uh, it's really, really light. Of course, I should have said that I'm using an iPad Pro M1 chip. So that, of course, makes a difference compared to older iPad. Now, when it comes to Orchestra, there are other plugins, of course, in the space of uh, iOS. And the first one that come to mind is um, iSymphonic Orchestra. I don't necessarily want to compare the two because um, I don't think it's fair, but um, I'd like to notice that iSymphonic Orchestra is quite large, 1.41 gigabyte. Of course, that means that it gives you a lot more presets available, which um, is um, really fantastic. Um, now, if you um, were to look at um, Mini Orchestra, and uh, if we search here on the App Store, like so, uh, you find that the size is only 8.2 megabyte. So it's really, really light as um, as an app, and um, that is absolutely a bonus. It also comes with uh, uh, 256 voices of polyphony, which again, uh, amazing in terms of being light to use, um, smaller as well as a size, so it works very well in terms of, of adding it into your setup. But uh, let's have a look at the app itself. So it contains nine different parts. Now, let's um, um, listen to each one of them. As you can see, there are these M buttons for mute. So you, when they're yellow, they're active. And when they're not yellow, that part is not muted. So let's start with the first one. Cello. <laughs> Really nice. Now let's move on to the next part, which is bass. Drums. Next one, horns. Really magic. That sounds really nice. Woodwind. Fantastic. Let's go to brasses. Really nice. You can imagine all of them sounding together. So violin, viola. And of course, choir.
You notice that uh, the choir are, are coming in as a sound slowly. It's because underneath each part, at least for the first seven parts, you have attack and release as an envelope, and the attack here is quite high, which of course you can reduce as well. Now let's move on to the next one, Glockenspiel. Really nice. And last one, percussion. You notice as I'm pressing on the keys that uh, um, sometimes the percussions were not sounding like so. It's because they're set to respond only to a certain velocity, which I also used in the introductory uh, performance. So I need to press harder for the percussion to come in. If you click on the image, you can set the minimal and the maximum velocity that a, that particular part would respond to. Okay, and then here you have the overall settings as well. You press on the X here to um, to close it. Okay, so that it's um, important because of course you can change uh, the way that the instrumental part respond based on. Uh, uh, the velocity you exercise on the keyboard. Of course, you have also settings for aftertouch and expression, okay, which uh, comes in uh, really handy as well for the first seven parts. And you also have an overall after aftertouch lag as well, which you can use. So you can mute each part, you can unmute them, you can adjust the pan, the overall um, volume, you can adjust the attack and release for each of the different parts with, with the exclusion of the last you. Here you have mute groups, which are really a nice uh, feature because uh, they um, um, they allow you to actually change the configuration like so. Look. So you can activate or deactivate multiple parts and you can uh, map them those against a, a particular uh, CC message, for example, so that when you press on a key, you can see is actually changing. I'm pressing on an external pad here on my launch key and I'm changing the mute groups. And, and, and that is really nice and useful, particularly during live performance. You have access here to reverb as an effect. You can adjust the level of dedicated dampness in the size, and you can also adjust your mid and size here effect, which is pan your stereo sound. You can adjust the overall volume here. You can go to the manual here as well. And then of course you can go to your setting where you can adjust further mappings, which becomes really handy. Up here, you have a menu to initialize the program, delete it, reset the factory default, access again, the um, manual, the about, and then here you have some settings, not many, but uh, good to start with. And of course, you can save here the changes to your, your uh, preset to move to the previous or the next one. Change mute group. Amazing, works really, really. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the short introduction to Mini Orchestra. It's quite um, a nice um, app. Um, I would um, also add that the samples are specific to key zones, so you need to remember that as well. So you'll find it in some of the keys um, on your keyboard that the samples will not play because they are specific to key zone as well. So remember that as well when you set it up. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.